through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 245. I'm Spencer. Hello, I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of 42, mm -hmm. we're talking baseball movies. Yes, not uh, to be confused with a, you know, Douglas Adams. It's not yes. 42. Well, it is the answer <laughs> to the universe. Yes. Maybe, that, maybe that's what we'll learn from that movie, actually. Let's hope. Um, should note, though, that this is probably actually one of the hardest lists for me to make, because there's a surprisingly... Uh, powerful depth yeah. of feel and the, like the stuff that we're not talking about is great. I mean, we're not talking Moneyball. We're yeah. not talking uh, what the babe. Yes. I just thought of that this morning. <laughs> uh, we're not talking rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. And these are just like smaller ones along the way. That not we're talking over. angels in the outfield. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I would totally talk about that actually if I thought about that. Um, but a little JGL action. Yeah. Again, you know, another one. Um, there's so many of them and yes. they're actually like so many good ones. It was really tough to actually try and figure out what was worth talking about. Yeah. I feel like the, the baseball the sports movie in general the inspirational sports movie you know when they work they really really work and i feel like baseball films there especially as we'll get to there's a chunk of time where baseball films were really in and there was a lot of really good really well done baseball movies yeah so, yeah, so i mean and you know it probably dates back i mean baseball has been around for what 150 years or something at Some this point uh, and it probably dates back that long but mm -hmm. the point we're going to start with is going to be mid 80s and probably one of the quintessential baseball movies and yes. that is the natural yes this is the robert redford mm -hmm. uh, story about interestingly enough one of the few fictitious mm -hmm. um Teams. movies yeah. yeah i mean so it's you know almost a surprisingly large percentage of the time they're actually deal with real teams yes, and real licenses players, and stuff. Yes, real real things yeah. that actually happened. Yeah. Uh, maybe not always real players, but yes. usually real teams at the very least. And this is about the New York Knights yes. baseball team. Uh, about a man who was going to be a star, gets in a relationship that ends mm -hmm. very, very badly. Yes, yes. Um, and through... Uh, I don't know if you want to call it talent or luck or whatever. Mm -hmm. He gets the opportunity to try again. Try again. Like 16 years, I think, later yeah. is what it is. I think yeah. he's like 39 or yeah. something when he finally gets back to the major leagues. Really and old rookie. What? He's an old rookie. Yes, he's an yes. old rookie. Um, again, <laughs> rookie, we're not talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but he finally gets that chance to try again. And it's, it's kind of an interesting one because it's, I mean, I guess most of them are in some context, you know, baseball is a means to tell another story. Yes. But this feels much more almost sort of other story with baseball as a backdrop. Yeah, it's very loosely based on kind of the Sir Percival from the Knights of the Round Table and Arthurian wow. Legend because the, the broken bat is just like Percy's broken mm. sword. Pop Fisher, the coach of the team, is the Fisher King, who is the, you know, wounded king who's trying to tell people get the Holy Grail, which would be the pennant. Mm. And they're even a team named the Knights. I mean, it's very it's, archaic. I mean, it's it's interesting, it's, too, because, you know, it, it, it does deal with sort of... Um, it's it's much more of a good versus evil story yes. than a lot of other. Yeah, baseball it's not just movies. triumphing over the game to win as much as there's directly like bad guys. Yeah, like trying to keep there there are people out to get him. Yeah. Like he has to sort of because the know. way the team is set up also is that like there's fighting over ownership of it, and mm -hmm. the coach can win ownership if they win the pennant, and right. uh, and so the owners are trying to sink the team. Team themselves not trying to sink. Which is not necessarily out of the ordinary from baseball movies. We'll see that later. Sadly, but, um, no. it's yeah, it's very much the big sure. bad guy owners. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> I mean, there there's there's a lot about corruption, you know, mm -hmm. which is not again uncommon in the world of baseball. I think the nineteen nineteen White Sox famously, mm -hmm. um, which we'll again talk about later. Yes, um, but it's yeah, it's very much sort of a, a morality tale with the backdrop of baseball, yes. and I mean, it never hurts to. Have, Robert Redford in it, yeah. Glenn Close, Robert Duvall, Kim Basinger. Yeah, I mean it is very crazy. Well, Kim yeah. Basinger, yeah, very rare, very young Kim Basinger playing a femme fatale. Yeah, well, to be honest. and you know, it, I mean, again, you know, very, very highly regarded amongst baseball fans yes. and amongst you know film fans. I mean, it was nominated for a couple of Academy Awards. Glenn Close was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. It was nominated for Best Cinematography, which is very nice. Yes. I mean, it has one of the most famous scenes 
in probably all of sports movies when he hits the the shot that hits uh, the lighting yep. equipment. I and mean, they, that's yeah. that, that one's the so final famous. home run. Everything. Yeah, and the sparks blow up and are raining down I mean, on the field while they run around. So famous, yeah. such a famous scene in terms of sports movies. Uh, best or, or nominated for best original score, best set direction. Um, hmm. You know, it's which makes sense because you know they're trying to make a period piece of, of like stadiums that probably actually existed or at least in the in the time. They have, yeah. And uh, they have their own little version of Babe Ruth in it too. The Hammer, yes. Yes. the Whammer, I think is played by Joe Don Baker. Yeah, <laughs> it, it definitely has um, allusions to real mm-hmm. things too. Yes. Um, also, on note though, uh, Kim Basinger nominated for a Golden Globe for Best uh, Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role. So wow, that's pretty cool. That's probably pretty young, or early in her career uh, yeah, too. I mean, I mean this, she looks crazy eight, young and it blows my mind. Yeah, and I got to give a shout man. out to uh, Barry Levinson, who uh, largely, you know, is known for other stuff. But um, I believe was it um, was Diner around that time. Mm. I think so. Uh, I don't. I don't. I forget when it was. But you know, the dude has done a lot of stuff. He did, you know, Bandits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget what else he did. I mean, he's been around for yeah. decades at this point. So it's 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 it's, it's a fascinating story to uh, the natural that is because it's definitely it's a lot of times it's like. The person has an amount of skill that they just need to use, and they just need to be good enough, or they have to overcome some kind of odds, or what have you, or they're trying to beat a record. In this case, it's very much like ingrained into this person, and it's other factors that keep him from being good or not. When he's motivated, he does things like break bats. Yeah. And, you know. Okay, and let me let me give you a little bit of a rundown, mm. just quickly on Barry Evans. He did Diner, The Natural, Young Sherlock Holmes, Tin Men, Good Morning Vietnam, uh, Rain Man, Bugsy, Toys. I mean, the dude Jeez. had a prolific uh, couple mm-hmm. decades. Sleepers, Wag the Dog, Sphere. Wow. I mean, he's, he's, Sphere. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> that movie. Not everyone can be. <laughs> yeah. Not every movie is a winner. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I mean, Robert Redford has done a, a lot in his career. And so yeah. to have this be one of your mo- more noteworthy films definitely speaks to how good yes. it is. So. Yes, yes. Moving right along from one baseball classic to another, just a mere four years later, we have Bull Durham. This is the Kevin Costner uh, film about a minor league team Mm -hmm. uh, with a love triangle between a pitcher, a catcher, catcher played by uh, Kevin Costner, pitcher played by Tim Robbins. Robbins, and a... I don't know. Uh, groupie? Yeah. I, I mean, she's a fan. Let's call her a fan to fan, be nice. Fan groupie. Yeah, fan. Um, played by Susan Sarandon. Yes. Obviously, her and uh, Tim Robbins went mm-hmm. on to yes, get married yes. after us. But Clearly, it, the love triangle worked. Yes. I mean, it's kind of an interesting story because, you know, it's there's a love triangle, but at the same time, there's also a... I don't know what you're calling it, mentorship yeah, story. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, like a mentor-mentee kind where of mentality. Tim Robbins is... Um, Sort of like I don't want you to call him that savant because that's more mental. But he's mm. like the, he's got the talent, but maybe he hasn't honed his skill. Ex- exactly, mm. he's not mentally where he needs to yeah. be to go to the major leagues. And it's one of those things that you know, um, Kevin Costner is the wily veteran. Granted, mm-hmm. he only I think he only played like one or two games or a something week or like something that, yeah. in the major league. But like he has the experience and knowledge of someone who's been around the yes. game. There, so he's there to life. kind of coach uh, Tim Robbins' character yes. into the major leagues. And it's it's sort of, I mean it's 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 a funny film. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a, a sweet film. It's kind of a it's a great movie. It's it's just a lot of fun. And again, you know, it's sort of interesting that once again, it um, doesn't concern you know a classic like major league yes. franchise. I mean, it it's just a small minor league mm-hmm. team that we're dealing with here. So which Ron Shelton was uh, formerly a minor league baseball player and used a lot of his personal experience for it. So in the same way that like Caddyshack was based on people's actual mm-hmm. experience. Some element of Bull Durham was Ron Shelton's actual life. I mean, it, it makes sense that he wrote it, but I'm even more impressed now that he directed it. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, to go from baseball player to director is yeah. pretty... Uh, yeah, and so, to, of all the movies to, you know, end up writing and directing, you direct a baseball classic, so... It, not only that, but he was nominated for uh, Best Original Screenplay hmm. at the Oscars. Probably so deserved good. it. Yeah. You know... It, it's funny. I mean, obviously, Kevin Costner is probably arguably the granddaddy of baseball film actors. Yes. He's done at least three mm-hmm. major roles in them. Um, of them, I would say this is probably the middle of them. Hmm. We'll talk about okay. the even bigger one, probably, yes. if you ask me. Uh, it's it's a fun film. I don't know if it necessarily has sort of the... 
the memorable moments that say the natural has or some of the later stuff we'll talk about it's it's just a fun film but yes. there isn't one signature scene that i think of when i think of this movie Interesting. maybe when they're in the locker room and the coach throws the stuff on the ground yeah i think um, of this movie l much less as a, about its baseball aspect and much more yeah. the comedy love triangle yeah i would say that, cause that's definitely a much more present and the, the i think the baseball is almost kind of a backdrop for that which I guess is kind of a, a reoccurring theme with all the baseball movies we're going to talk about is that the most signature ones that we probably will be talking about mm -hmm. are not necessarily driven by the baseball yes. story. Yes, it's which, just a, a setting or a theme that they bring up to you to you know have all these different elements of like winning and adversity. Et which I mean is probably true of like other sports films. Oh, definitely. Think about it, Rudy. Oh yeah. Um, Hoosiers, all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff like that. It's it's more about the character than yes. the story. Step so. up to the streets. Yeah, exactly. That was much more about Channing Tatum. <laughs> let me tell you. Oh yeah, he wasn't in that one. That's just step up. <laughs> Do. Um, let's move just like a mere. I think it was. Yeah. Was it the, even the same year? It was uh, one year later. Wow. We have Major League. Yes. This is probably the first one that we're going to talk about that legitimately concerns more of the baseball side of yes, things. This is about definitely. the Cleveland Indians. Mm -hmm. um, much like The Natural, the owner is, I, guess, I forget if she's a former showgirl whose husband yeah, dies and she wants to move the team from Cleveland, so right. she wants them to get such a low attendance yes, that, that she's allowed to get out of their lease and move mm -hmm. them to, I think it's like Miami or something like that. Yes. Um, so they bring in this team <laughs> of um, misfits, misfits <laughs> who pull together and end up winning yeah, hey, what a shock adversity. uh it's very much i mean there's definitely sort of more of a character story there too but it's also very much about the baseball there's much more yeah. of baseball games mm -hmm. in the actual movie much more yes. sort of play footage um, yeah, and showing them like going from sucky to better to exactly. winning. Yeah. yeah um you know much like uh Bull Durham, it's yes. largely driven by the veteran catcher, played by Tom Berenger in oh, this Oh man, this, the cast of this movie. It's great. So great. I mean, before, a lot of them before they were stars. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dennis Haysbert before he was really big. Yep. Uh, Charlie Sheen, uh, obviously he was really legit at that point. Mm -hmm. Corbin Bernstein. Oh yeah, that's um, right. Wesley Snipes, mm -hmm. Rene Russo. I mean, it's it's crazy the amount of talent. Bob Uecker, obviously. Um, <laughs> yes, that's gained right. Gained his um, non-baseball fame. Like, he actually mm -hmm. was legit baseball history. Yes, I that's mean, true. I believe he was a player and a broadcaster yes. before he came in to do the broadcasting here. So, I mean, that's so to... iconic now. He might as well be just an actual broadcaster for the rest of his life and just... I mean, he is, a, uh, isn't he? I think, I think he still I think is. You're, I think, I think he right, still actually. is a broadcaster for the Milwaukee Brewers or oh, something like that. Look at that. Yeah. So I think it's interesting. They did a lot of tricks in this movie to make the actors appear as they, as they were really as good as their characters. Mm -hmm. So, for, like, for example, and normally a pitching mound is 60 feet, uh, 60 and a half feet away from the horse home plate, but to give the impression that Charlie Sheen's fastball was a lot faster, they actually moved the mound up 10 feet and shot from behind him. Though I will say, besides Kevin Costner, Charlie Sheen might be one of the most legit baseball yes. people. Like he, he, he was a high school pitcher who was offered a baseball scholarship uh, to the University of Kansas. And he still like goes to like spring training and plays with teams from time to yeah, time. Like he, he actually threw a high 80s fastball like, in the film. He legitimately <laughs> is passionate about baseball. So yes. sort of like much like uh, Kevin Costner. Yes. It's something that is really close to his heart, which makes it that much more yeah. interesting. So he could actually throw like an 85 mile an hour fastball, but they filmed from like behind him so that they can make it look like the 100 mile sure, an hour. Sure, yeah, yeah. And like Wesley Snipes uh, running scenes were actually shown in slow motion mm. so that they could speed it up and are, uh, were shown in slow motion to give the impression that he's running faster than he actually is. I mean, it's 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 just of 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 all the baseball movies we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Like, there are definitely a lot of classics. I yes. respect The Natural. I respect um, Bull Durham. Mm -hmm. Some of the other ones we're going to talk about. But of the ones I actually legit love. Major League has got to be oh, amongst yeah. my top it's, ones. It's just so much fun. Yeah, like it's 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 wacky misfits, man. Who doesn't love? I mean, that's another one we're not even talking about. Bad News Bears, like yeah, wacky misfits overcoming and winning when they're supposed to suck is always fun, even if the movie's done bad. It's it's just yeah. It's well, like, I'm not saying this is. It's but like it's, it's not done bad, but it's it's definitely not as like serious as some of oh, the no, other ones totally, we're gonna deal with. Yes. It's much more skewed towards comedy than even something like Bull Durham. Yes. I say it's much more comedic than that. Yes. Um, this is a zany comedy. But you know, even still, like it's 
I probably like it more. I think I think it's more fun. Um, I feel much more about it being a baseball movie than them, mm -hmm. perhaps. Like, I don't really think of them when I think of them as baseball movies. Yes. That's sort of like a secondary issue to me. I can see that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as cheesy as it is, it's it's probably one of my favorite baseball movies. It's so, so funny. I mean, it's I'm not going to say that my <laughs> taste in baseball movies is by any means like the most authentic or <laughs> yeah. quality driven, yes. but. Spencer it, and I sp clearly spend a lot of time watching baseball. Yes. He might actually. Yeah. I don't. Oh, that's, I do spend a lot of time yeah. watching. Um, again, cons just one year later, yeah. we're talking '89 again. Uh, this is all within a five-year period from yeah. the natural to now. We're talking Field of Dreams, uh, probably the third major baseball classic that people always yes. discuss when they talk about baseball yes. movies. Uh, this is the story of a man who were, uh, has a farm. Yes. He starts hearing voices which tell him to build a field and get certain people to come. Um, the field brings back the kind 1919 yeah. uh, Chicago White Sox yes. who were sort of were infamous for their um, cheating scandal, particularly uh, Ray Liotta, Shoeless, Shoeless Joe, Joe Jackson. Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of Bringing, um, what's his name? Uh, his uh, dad? Darth Vader. Oh, James uh, O. Jones? James O. Jones back so he can get that opportunity to play that he never did in real That's life. Right, yeah. And he's so kind this of is J.D. Salinger based character, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And so he's, he's, he's gets his chance to go back and, um, live out the dream that he yes. never was sort of able to do. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting film. Again, much less baseball driven than yeah. most true baseball films. I mean, it's, again, much more of a backdrop about him building this field. I mean, I, in terms of actual baseball <laughs> yeah. action, yeah, it's probably a very small portion yeah. of the movie. Yeah, actually, I mean, that's interesting. It's, it's like him trying to track down Terrence Mann, James mm -hmm. Earl Jones, um, him fighting against his uh, brother-in-law, played yes. by Timothy Busfield, who wants to sell the farm, who yes, thinks he's right. blowing all their money. It's a wasteful yeah. idea. Um, it's kind of a sweet story, though. You know, you've got like him, uh, who seems crazy, and his wife, who stands by him, even what though he seems uh, played by Amy Madigan. That's right. Um, uh, and it's one of those things that you know it it sort of questions what is real, what is fake, what are people seeing, what is. Mm -hmm. Why can some people sort of <laughs> yeah. experience it? Why can some you're like, not? is he crazy? Is he um, not but crazy? it's it's just a really interesting and thoughtful film and that's it's 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 definitely probably one of the most unique sort yeah. of baseball stories yeah it's, totally it's not about just like a team like ever even the like even the natural yes. is about a baseball team fundamentally yes, this is definitely about a one man's journey that involves baseball well i mean this is like what this is 89 that this came out. Yeah. This is 70 years after the 1919 well, Black Sox. Yeah. So it's it's very much not a current baseball story in the in the truest sense. Yes. So it's 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 just a great film. Often movie. misquoted film uh, if you know if you build it he will come is the actual quote and mm -hmm. it's off it's one of the like 10 most misquoted film phrases. They will come. Yeah, it? if you build it they will come. Uh -huh. Also interestingly enough this is just one of those weird like the way Hollywood works. Um, at the time, as unknowns, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were among the thousands of extras wow. <laughs> in the Fenway Park scene and are uncredited. You know, no, obviously, right. they weren't anybody at the time. But over a decade later, when Phil Alden Robinson welcomed Affleck to the, to the set of Some of All Fears, Affleck said, nice working with you again. And when Robinson said, what do you mean? He, he explained the connection. That's funny. <laughs> well, good on you, Ben mm -hmm. Affleck, for that one. That's clever. Make a call back, be like, hey, man, I, it was awesome working with you in Field of Dreams. <laughs> but it's crazy to think, you know, of all the films we're talking about, you know, we've talked about The Natural, we've talked yeah. about Bull Durham. This is the first one to actually be nominated for Best Picture. Oh, okay. Really? So it got nominated for Best Picture, it got nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Original Score, which again, you know, the music is tremendously memorable, yes. so good on you, James Horner, for that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, this is probably the film I have the most personal connection to, because I went to school with Timothy Busfield's son, That's right. and he actually came to our school to present this when I was in, like, second grade. Right. Granted, I didn't really appreciate <laughs> what I was seeing at that time, mm -hmm. but probably that was one of, retrospectively, right. one of the most memorable brought experiences. brought that up when we talked Leota, right? Did I? Yeah, okay. He might have. Well, well at least a little bit. That's my one story to drop. Yeah, hey, hey. It's my only, hey, man. It's my only one. Drop it in as much as yeah. possible. So, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, 
it's beloved for a reason. Yeah, it really is well deserved. It, you know, it's a, it's a pick me up story. You, again, you, there's something about, and that's the thing in sports movies in general, especially baseball movies. No matter how you phrase it, you always have somebody overcoming a major adversity, and, and that's inspirational. Even whether it's done comedically, as in Major League, whether it's done, you know, just one person, whether it's a whole team, whether it even is about playing, but just about the sport, like Field of Dreams. No, you're totally There's right. a lot to overcome. Yeah. As our next film. As our next shows. one. Again, uh, again, you know, from about 84 to like 94, I would call arguably the decade of baseball films. Because yeah. another one that we're going to talk about just a few years later, A League of Their Own, came out. Uh, this is the story of the female baseball leagues that our female baseball league that was um, created during World, World War II, II when so, all yeah. the men were men were over in the war, so they tried to create something to entertain the yes. people who were still around. Um, you got a few... Again, again, it's sort of like a team of misfits yeah. brought together with the veteran coach played by Tom Hanks. Classically. Um, you got Tom Hanks, you got Gina Davis, Lori Petty, Madonna, um, um, Rosie it? O'Donnell. Yes, thank you. Like, it's... It's jam packed with people, and this is a lot of them were probably pre really star yeah. power. I mean, yeah, like Tom Rosie O'Donnell Hanks, was definitely nothing at the time of this thing. I mean, Madonna was still just breaking out as a musician. Yeah, this is probably point. one of her first acting roles. Uh, yeah. I mean, Lori I know Gina Pet Davis maybe was on the way up, but Lori Petty was definitely not. Um, I mean, she is, might have had roles, but I don't think this she is was probably huge. close to the time that um, Point Break was out so i don't know which one came out first i have to check but you know um she i mean she had a very sort of small window where she was really yeah. big i mean she had the right. okay paper. point break was uh 91 so okay. it was the year before this okay so that was probably her p yeah between this and that um those were her probably two biggest roles i mean she had probably. like tank girl I yeah think, a few years tank later probably but I, I mean you know you think about like gina davis yeah she this is one of those ones that definitely broke her as a star. Yeah. I mean, she is sort of the heart and soul of the movie. And granted, in some ways, um, it's kind of... She plays sort of the straight character. I mean, everyone else around her is sort of um, wacky. Yes. I mean, She's Madonna's really the one who loves all the boys. Yes. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell's like the star or uh, the real true powerhouse mm -hmm. player. Her sister's sort of a little wacky... Um, Jokester. That's totally I mean, true. It's, yeah. it's really very much. <laughs> She's the one who's like baseball. Let's do it. Let's okay. win. So to, to sort of put some perspective for Gina Davis, mm -hmm. before this she had had um, Fletch, The Fly, Beetlejuice, Accidental Tourist, Quick Change, and a League of or sorry Thelma and Louise. Wow. So she was she was legit yeah. at this point. She was uh, probably her, her and, and Hanks. Tom Hanks yeah. were stars going into this yeah. one like g genuine stars and i remember this being not the first but definitely one of the first big roles where tom hanks didn't play a lovable character i feel like this is early into the grizzled yeah tom hanks i mean role. this is I, I think this is shortly before uh or right around the same time as um philadelphia oh that yeah even been the same year actually i want to say philadelphia was maybe a little bit later but i'm not 100 percent sure yeah this but thing. you know uh you're right i mean he's not necessarily um the most likable... Okay, Philadelphia was the next year. Okay. Um, he was. I mean, he's a drunk. Yeah. yeah. So he's not, like, a, a pure character. But he becomes fairly yeah, yeah. likable. Like he's he, crying in baseball. I mean, initially, he's really sort of jaded that he has to um, coach yeah. this women's league when he wants to be a player. I mean, he's sort of right at the tail end of his career. is kind of washed up. He wants to continue playing. But they're sort of pushing him into this. And so he becomes, you know... An alcoholic, yeah. basically, and the purpose of that. But he comes around and starts to respect them. Yes. And once he starts respecting them, he kind of becomes a lovable guy yes. again. You realize that he is a wise guy. He and Gina Davis sort of eventually bond. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I, I think it's interesting because you know you got we, we, you've got such a big cast in the same way that with Major League, where there was work put into making sure that the actors could properly portray baseball players. Um, all actresses auditioning for this film had to prove that they could actually play baseball. Mm. Uh, all cool. actresses casting in the film, except for Gina Davis, did all their own baseball stunts, and none of the performers wanted stunt doubles. That's so, cool. I mean, yeah. uh, Gina Davis nominated for Best Actress in a Comedy Musical at the Golden Globes. Nice. That's cool. Uh, but I do want to know, in terms of your uh, stunt thing, mm -hmm. uh, 
Films directed by Penny Marshall. And Penny yes. Marshall is a pretty legit sports fan. I believe yes. she goes to like every Clipper game or something <laughs> like that. So she's a definite sports fan. So yes. she, I'm sure, wanted to make it as authentic as possible. And I'm sure this is probably something that was definitely passionate to her. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because uh, unfortunately, though, uh, in, in relation to that, uh, the film pr- portrays the league as unpopular and profitable and you, until they use gimmicks to basically get the male audiences in, in, but in reality, the league was very popular and profitable from the very beginning, largely because it played in towns in the upper Midwest that had no way of watching live baseball. Mm. The league actually grew to a 10-team, two-division league, but well, the advent of televised uh, baseball games in the early 50s led to the demise of its popularity, because it was popular because people couldn't see baseball. Well, it didn't also help that, you know, the regular major leagues sort of came, came back, back and have been, yeah. got on track. I mean, so it's yeah. sort of like always going to be a secondary yeah. league to that. Um, but, you know, that sort of brings up a good point, though, in terms of, you know, just that classic sort of um, film thing like Fargo, you know, yeah. based on a true story. There, it, I mean, is is inspired by a true story, but yeah. it's edited to, you know, um, tell a certain narrative. Well, yeah, exactly. It's edited to make the story more uh, palatable to a two-hour film. Yes. Like if it's just like the league mm-hmm. was successful, yeah. that's not necessarily the most dramatic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. story. Like it's they, true, and, and you know, it, it's also one of those things that I feel like was what ninety-two or something. Ninety-two, yeah. Ninety-two. I mean, I think that it was important. In retro, in a retrospective way, whether or not they were popular or not at the time, to say, "Hey, these ladies did this thing, and it was very popular." Because you're looking at the beginning of politi- major political correctness going on in in, yeah. in society, or post '80s, like you know, "Hey, look at these women who did this amazing thing but through history." You know? There is the one thing we got to give a shout out to that I mean, again, leads credence to the. Imp- importance of the league is that the film I believe either begins or ends I think it's ends with them at the Hall of Fame yes, and they're right. induct they're doing a ceremony to right. do the exhibit that's about true. the women's league and so they had like a bunch of the people as elder versions mm-hmm. of themselves coming <laughs> back to the ceremony it up. so it, it shows you know it's significant enough to be in the baseball yeah. Hall of Fame so yes. that's that's pretty cool um, moving right along <laughs> to a story not so much, again, traditionally set within a baseball team. And a guilty pleasure, I think of. Oh, I don't even call it guilty pleasure. I just think it's straight up good. <laughs> I'm more mean of us putting it in this list. Like, no, I'm, I'm like still going to defend okay. it. Okay. Still going to defend okay. it. And that is The Sandlot. Yes. This is the story about, you know, a group of kids. I think it was in the, what, 60s or something like I that? I believe, yeah. Um, who are just fans of baseball, mm-hmm. get together to play, who end up going through hijinks. Mm-hmm. As part knock, of their, I think, a knocked a ball over the fence where yes, the na- yes. crazy neighbor dog lives. Yes. Two, you know who the neighbor is, you remember? Oh, uh, God, it's been too long. James Earl Jones. Oh, God, Coming that's back right. again <laughs> as a uh, veteran yes. baseball player yes. who um, uh, played, I believe, with Babe Ruth. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, which is sort of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it's told in, uh, I believe, mostly flashback yeah. by a kid who becomes a broadcaster about his friends and sort of, you know, their passion of baseball and sort of stuff like that. It's just, I mean, as any kid who sort of played any sort of sports, like, there's so much that resonates from this movie, yeah. you know, competition against other groups of kids, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Baseball is sort of a method of bonding with other people who you might not necessarily get along with. Because this kid is sort of an outsider. Mm-hmm. I believe his mom was either moved to... Okay, his mom and stepdad moved to this neighborhood. And as a means to sort of um, get friends, he starts to... Right. Pre- or he pretends he's a baseball fan. <laughs> which leads to the whole um, use of the autographed Babe Ruth baseball which he thinks is Baby Ruth. Yes. Some woman who doesn't realize who it is. Because he's an idiot. Doesn't realize it's the Sultan of Swat, you know, whatever all the nicknames they reel off on it. It's just, I mean, it's a cute film. But again, you know, baseball is very much sort of, It's. I would say this is sort of caught between the two. It's caught mm. between um, being a backdrop and being an important plot device. I would agree. I mean, there's a lot, you know, like going to the swimming pool or... Yeah. The, Andy Peppercorn, man. Yeah. Uh, played by Marley Shelton, who was... <laughs> Well before her stardom. Oh, that's right. That was Marley Shelton. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm blowing your mind here. You did. You um, did, because I saw it, and I was just like, whoa, yes. Yeah. Totally. That makes so much sense why Pleasantville blew my mind so much as a kid, because I was like, it's she's the hot. Sandlot girl. She's hot. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, there's the wacky hijinks of trying to get the baseball back, yeah. you know, creating the little robots to go in there, <laughs> yeah. jump you over the fence and running to grab the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's sort of, it also sort of um, is a discussion about sort of reality versus myth and legend because they Definitely. fear this dog and this neighbor and whatnot. And then they ultimately learned up, that learned is... that this guy is essentially everything that they dream about. Yes. He was a baseball player. He loves the game. Yeah, you know? He played a new, you know, you know, it was the contemporary of all the players that, that them are legendary and will never exist. And also you just think about it in the context of the dog, the dog yeah. is this terrifying, Chujo like yeah. beast. But ultimately, you know, when the fence comes down and it's on top of the dog, yes, it re they all realize that he is just doing what he's supposed to do. No, he's not just he's not even that. He's just he's just a regular dog. Yes. I mean he's 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 there crying beneath the fence, and the kids are like we got to get him out of here. Yeah. Like we can't just leave him crushed beneath so this fence. It's, I mean it's a sweet story. It like, is. I mean it's it's got wacky antics, but mm -hmm. there is that mm -hmm. heart, and that's why I think it's not even guilty pleasure. I think it's just a legit good film. And like, I think it's, it's sweet. pretty universally loved. I think yeah, people love I, the same lot. As they should. It's a great film. That I mean, Wendy Peppercorn scene, by the way, is uh, uh, the whole thing with the uh, lifeguarding yes. and, and getting CPR. That's uh, or When they're looking at her, not CPR. Uh, that is directly mirroring Cool Hand Luke. When they're like, uh, she knows what she's doing. And the answer, yes, she does. She knows exactly what she's doing. I see. And I want to give a, a note that the the cast of this mm. won uh, Outstanding Youth Ensemble oh, at man. the Young Artist Awards. They were so They're great. They're a great cast. Such great, a great, great cast. I mean, granted... Not very um, many of them did, went on to do... Eh, there, are, there are a few. I mean, like, Patrick Renna, I think, went on to do, like, um, was it Big Green? No, uh, Mean Green. Something like that. I mean, mm. a soccer film. He was in uh, oh, Son-in-Law. Uh, Big Green. Yes. It was a soccer movie. Um, you know... They're, yeah, they didn't really do a heck of a lot. But you had, like, Dennis Leary as the stepdad. Yes. Karen Allen as the mom. I mean, James Earl Jones. Marway Shelton as Winnie Peppercorn. I mean, there's definitely a, a handful of people That's who true. are really interesting. So, I mean, I, I love the movie. I think it's legit awesome. It is. One of the probably lesser-known movies that we're going to talk about, which I think is amazingly good is 61 yes directed by billy crystal yes uh who's a huge baseball fan yes, as well which i'll bring up about uh roger maris and mickey mantle's pursuit of their 61st home yes. run to and break I the record that babe ruth had set decades before yes. and i want to say this was like an hbo movie. it was it was yeah. an hbo movie which is probably exactly why it's slightly you know lesser lesser known i would say. that would yeah. be my guess it's true but, I mean, the cast is phenomenal. Oh, Somewhat, Barry um, Pepper and Thomas Jane, man. As Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. But you also mm -hmm. have, like, Anthony Michael Hall as Whitey Ford. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Bauer as Bob Sir. Um, S speaking of uh, Anthony Michael Hall as Whitey Ford, uh, he is right-handed, but he, Whitey Ford is left-handed. Mm -hmm. So all the scenes with Anthony Michael Hall pitching were shot with the actors wearing reverse insignia and numbers, mm. and then the film flipped well, so as appeared to make him left-handed. That's, that's, that's cool. the same technique that they used with Gary Cooper in when he played Lou Gehrig in The Pride of the Yankees, another baseball movie that we are not talking about. Yeah, again, you know, so, still, so many of them. What a weird, what a neatly weird technique to make him, you know, of all the ways that we would think of, like, method acting or trick photography, it's like, that's pretty, that's a pretty smart idea. Of all the films that we're going to talk about, um, this one might be amongst the most hardcore, true baseball yeah, I films. Say, I like, mean, this accurate. is very much about <laughs> the team. It's very much about the experience of the team. I mean, yes. this is about... Two guys who are friends who are sort of taking on a legend of Babe Ruth yes. and a record that was so beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which, interestingly enough, wasn't Babe Ruth's favorite record he had. It really? Was, yeah, it was, it was like, a, I should have written it down. It was a specific, like, number, it was a specific game or in, number of innings or number of hits that he got. It wasn't his actual home run record that he was the most proud of. It was this other one, which I should have written down. Sorry. Uh, I mean, it's... Look it up. You'll see it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, they're dealing with a legend. And these are two, um, I guess you would say, flawed guys. I mean, Mickey Mantle, oh, yeah. for sure, was an alcoholic. Yes. Like, he... And Billy one, Crystal got, a, like, I think, was he went to the Mantle, Mickey Mantle, like... 
um, family. The right word? family, yeah, went to them and was like, hey, I want to portray some of this. Is that okay? And got permission from them to do some of that. I mean, he is one of probably, I mean, there are definitely been, I mean, Babe Ruth, I mean, the Babe yeah. is all about how dysfunctional of a guy he was. Yes. But Mickey Mantle has got to be up there in terms of um, sort of... Dysfunctional baseball heroes? I was going to say, like, you know, in some ways, least sympathetic baseball heroes because I, I mean he he's like he's he was kind of a um, a guy who had a lot of flaws but he yes. he is one of the most beloved baseball players of all time still mm-hmm. yeah. like he still is one of the most I mean shit I got um when I was a kid my parents got me a Mickey Mano autograph baseball that <laughs> I still have to this day because this I mean and but it's I mean if you think about it, my parents gave me something that was like an alcoholic, like a, <laughs> yeah. people to yeah. aspire to. Like they're they're people that are better. Saying. Shit, I mean, technically, Roger Maris mm-hmm. is a more upstanding individual. I mean, yes. if you look at like who you would want to have a record like this, yeah. in a lot of ways, he would be the kind of guy you want. I mean, but the pressure was so intense on him. I mean, Mickey Mantle falls out after a while just yeah. because of his health. He's unable to sustain his pursuit right, of the yeah. record. But, I mean, Robert, Roger Maris starts like losing his hair. <laughs> like, people legit hate him breaking that record. Like, it's crazy. It is crazy, but he's like an upstanding guy mm-hmm. who's like a, sort of an all-American kind of boy yeah. who you'd want something like this. But Babe Ruth is so beloved that people hated him for even... Th- they were okay with Mickey Mantle doing it, <laughs> but, you know, Roger Maris... Not okay. I think they didn't really feel like he was as much of a true Yankee yeah. as Mickey Mantle, and that's probably part of it. But, I mean, it's it's such a intensely team driven story and an inten- yes. such an intensely personal true story that it really makes the film that much more engaging. Yeah, and most of the game most of the details of the games recreated in this film, check this one out, were based on Billy Crystal's first hand memories yeah. of having seen or watched the actual games. As a result, the film's crew members nicknamed him Rain Man for his uncanny ability to remember the games to the smallest detail. I mean, him, he, I mean, again, much like Penny Marshall, like, he is a legit yeah. fan. Like, like that's, just, that's just crazy to me to imagine uh, someone, I mean, someone directing or a, a big true to life film where they're like, no, actually, I remember this inning and it went this way and you know, well, I mean, like, it depends on sort of the, the context you think about it if you think about it in the context of like a director being brought on to it that'd be one thing but i think true. he was the driving force oh in no getting this film made. no I mean, and that's and i think that's what's to me even more interesting is that he had this first-hand experience he was like i've, I've been to, i've seen these games like i know it let's do i want to do it like i got it so yeah. way uh, to go billy crystal yeah way to go uh i mean very much so um it, it was nominated for all sorts of Academy Awards. Totally worth Barry it. Pepper was nominated for a Golden... Or sorry, not Academy Awards. All sorts of awards. Mm. Uh, Barry Pepper was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Performance as, uh, in a TV series. Uh, it won Outstanding Cast at the Emmys. Totally you know, deserved. It's... Um, Sorry, outstanding casting mm. at the Emmys, and it won you know all sorts of sound awards, stuff like that, art design. Um, it was nominated for. It's it's just it's it's a very very well done film. Yes. I mean, granted it's HBO and not theatrical, but it's still a great yep. great story. Um, which brings us to this Friday, April twelfth. Again, another very historically driven film. Forty two. Mm-hmm. Another story- numerical title. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the story of Jackie Robinson's. Yes. Um, I don't know what you're called. Introduction, breakthrough to the major leagues yeah, as the breakthrough. first minority player to play in the uh, major, major leagues. leagues, and the understandable challenges that were presented about that, not just to the fans, mm-hmm. to other teams within the league who yep. resented uh, the was it the Giants, the Brooklyn Brooklyn Dodgers, Brooklyn right. Dodgers. I think it's the Brooklyn Dodgers. Mostly yeah, Brooklyn yes. Dodgers. I'm okay. okay. Um, uh, bringing him on like they didn't even want to play a team with a black player on it um and so i think the the film looks great i'm very much interested in seeing it and in fact sort of my favorite scene in the trailer which has a jacked up looking harrison ford yeah um is when harrison ford as branch ricky the team executive who brought in jackie robinson says to him you know i don't want a player who is going to want to fight back. I want a player who's not going to need to fight back. Someone who's willing to just uh, 
be, be above be, it, yeah. sort of. And I think that's a really interesting thing, and I think that's probably something that helped Jackie Robinson make the transition yes, he did because definitely. he was such uh, an incredible figure that he was able to overcome that yeah. challenge he was just pretty so gracefully. Good. Yeah. I mean, he was so good. He was so graceful mm -hmm. that, I mean, eventually people had to come around to him. Yeah. Like, it's like... He just kept w doing well, you I know, mean, and not being a in, jerk about In the about face it. of adversity. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's, it's really a, kind of an amazing story. And it's... I mean, it's directed by Brian Hedgeland, who did L.A. Confidential. Uh, he did, let's see, what else did he do? He wrote stuff like Green Zone hmm. and the new uh, Robin Hood. Mm. I think he directed, um, he did, uh, what's it called? He did, um, I think he did Payback. Oh, okay. Um, nice. I think he did, he did Wonder Boys, I believe. Hmm. Um, let's see, he did, uh, sorry, he did, he directed Payback. He didn't do L.A. Confidential. He wrote L.A. Confidential. Ah, uh, nice. Um, screenplay? Uh, trying, yes, screenplay of L.A. Confidential. But he directed Payback, which I love. Mel so, Gibson. Yeah, love that. Uh, he did A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger, oh, yeah. which is which is I okay. I like that film. Like uh, that the film. musical stuff, hey, and it was a little much. Uh, yeah. When what the people surprise. are like, clapping along to us, like, we that, will rock you. That Spencer doesn't like something that has music. Uh, he did The Order... And um, like that's pretty much it. So I mean, he's not he's not a profound director himself, mm -hmm. but his his written work is pretty impressive. I mean, he wrote L.A. Confidential. He wrote Conspiracy Theory. He wrote Payback. He wrote Mystic River. He wrote Man on Fire. He wrote Green Zone. You know, so Dang. he's he's done some pretty decent stuff over time. Some ske little sketchy stuff with like assassins, but you know, <laughs> not everyone's perfect again. But you know, this is probably so Sylvester Stallone, yeah, Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in terms of sports stories in yeah. the history of sports, this has got to be probably one of the most significant ones. I was kind of surprised when I first saw it coming out that there hadn't already been a Jackie Robinson movie, yeah. to be honest. There's I think, been like eight, so many Babe Ruth stories, it's like, why can't we I forget <laughs> exactly when uh, Jackie Robinson occurred. It might have been like 42 or something like that. I forget. I think like last year was like the 60th or 70th anniversary hmm. or something like that. Interesting. Um, but, you know, it's... I, th I think the... Major League Baseball has really gotten to the support and promotion of Jackie Robinson. Oh, yeah. As in terms of history, and I think it's just... I don't know. Yeah, for whatever reason, yeah. it really hasn't come around. Never. I mean, you think about like stuff like... Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like other significant stories that have occurred. I mean, Babe Ruth would be up there. Yeah. I mean, um, people trying to break Babe Ruth's record we already got. I'm surprised they haven't <laughs> done like a Jim Brown movie hmm. or something like that. I guess maybe because he's alive still. Probably. Um, I think that adds an element to the story is that he's not alive to sort of see this. Um, or a documentary on all the steroid use. Yeah. This is probably a more uplifting baseball story, so that's probably the why they wanted to get that out <laughs> no. there. So um, maybe maybe that is why they sort of pushed it through. <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it, and uh, I I, th I think it'll be a good one. Yeah, I think it'll be a good. Looks, one. It looks interesting. You know, baseball movies, like I said, sports movies in general, very uplifting, very interesting stories. It's always nice to see someone win. You know, and most yeah. of these movies, that's the great thing too. Is like a lot of these movies, you know, that they're going to win because they have to because it's a movie. Right. But there's, you know, there's they like any good drama. There's those moments where you're not sure. I, I also think this one's a little bit more nebulous since this is about yeah. a person and not a team specifically. A lot yeah. of times it's about the team and not the person. Yes. So this is sort of one of the more general rules. More like the natural in that yeah. way. Or uh, 61, I guess. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let us know your thoughts about 42 and all mm -hmm. these baseball movies. The other ones are so many, as yeah. we said, that we didn't talk just about tons. just because there's so many good ones yeah. we couldn't talk about. But uh, join us next time for our DVD rundown for the week of April 16th. Yes. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842, or on iTunes, Blip.tv, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue and get some sticky, sticky badges. <laughs> Go to iTunes, leave us some star things, write Reviews, the things. all that good stuff. And then give us the, the thumbs on the, the YouTube. And comment. We love, yes. to, we love to chat with you mm -hmm, on there. There's mm -hmm. all sorts of good conversations, so let us know. And, uh... See you next time.
Space game and it feels all